Good morning. Uh, thank you to the Ohio Academy of Family Physicians for having us today uh, talk a little bit about our project. My name is Sherry Bolin. I'm an associate professor of medicine at Case Western Reserve University and a general internal medicine physician at the Metro Health System, which is the county or essential hospital for Case Western Reserve University. And I am co-leading a Medicaid and now Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality funded statewide cardiovascular and diabetes health collaborative called Cardio. And I have with me today, uh, Dr. Wexler, who is a site lead with us on the collaborative from the Ohio State University. And I'll let him uh, introduce himself. Thanks, Sherry. Uh, my name is Randy Wexler. I'm a professor of family and community medicine uh, at the Ohio State University. And I'm currently the academic vice chair. Uh, most of my research career has been based on improvements in uh, high blood pressure control and cardiovascular health in the primary care setting along with uh, health system change to uh, help support that. And so this particular research project is in line with a lot of things that many of us have been doing over the years. Great. So I'm going to just describe very briefly about our uh, collaborative um, just so everybody is familiar with it, our statewide collaborative really began with funding from the Ohio Department of Medicaid in 2017. And uh, Case Western Reserve University worked to link all the schools of medicine across Ohio um, in an effort to disseminate evidence-based best practices to improve cardiovascular health and reduce disparities in cardiovascular health to Medicaid providers. And due to um, several of our early successes in improving blood pressure control, as well as reaching um, many of our folks across the state, we really um, were um, funded by the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality on this Heart Healthy Ohio initiative. Um, and this is really to expand our reach to all primary care providers across the state, provide quality improvement support services to these practices, and pilot a heart healthy quality improvement project within 60 diverse primary care practices across the state. So this heart healthy quality improvement project is really focused on the ABCs, A for aspirin, B for blood pressure control, uh, C for cholesterol management, and S for smoking cessation, with really a primary focus on blood pressure control and smoking cessation, since those are such um, key areas for opportunity for improvement across the state. And to do that, we really continue to link the seven medical schools across the state, but have engaged with many other stakeholders. So we have the three regional health improvement collaboratives, uh, Better Health Partnership, the Health Collaborative, and the Healthcare Collaborative of Greater Columbus, as well as the CMS Quality Improvement Organization, IPRO, to assist us in thinking about that quality improvement support services to practices. And then we really linked with professional organizations like the Ohio Academy of Family Physicians to strengthen our reach across the state and align with the priorities of the organizations around cardiovascular health. And then we have government, you know, governmental organizations like Ohio Department of Medicaid, Ohio Department of Health, as well as payers and others to really promote that alignment and collaboration across the state for greater impact. And, and that's that's a really great way to approach a lot of this. So we was wondering if maybe you could help us understand why primary care would be the target for this type of uh, initiative, because we all know high blood pressure cuts across a lot of specialties, but this is really designed for, for primary care. Yeah, that's a, a great question. Um, well, primary care has been really effective in improving the health of the communities we serve by improving the quality of care within the practices in our region and across the state. Um, and so that's been very effective. We've used that to improve blood pressure control in the region and, and has been very um, helpful in pilots across the state to really make a difference. But it's also the bread and butter, what we call the bread and butter of primary care, because we're really doing blood pressure, cholesterol, smoking, uh, cessation work in our practices. So this is really um, what we really want to do in primary care. So it's a really good focus for this particular project. And that makes a lot of sense. And, and hopefully a lot of others who are watching this will feel the same way and want to be engaged. And those that are interested will probably want to know, like, what might the timeline be for the project? What are the aims? And if you could touch on those, that would probably uh, be helpful to anybody who's watching. 
Great. Yeah, our goals of this project or initiative overall are to develop that strong statewide collaborative, which supports primary care teams. So anybody who's just interested in being part of our collaborative and helping be a voice for primary care could be involved with us. Um, the second is around co-design and implementing that heart healthy quality improvement project within 60 primary care practices across the state. So if anybody obviously is interested in that, we would love to have you involved in that, which is focused primarily on blood pressure control and smoking cessation. And then the third part of the project is really understanding what factors are associated with greater improvements in cardiovascular care so we can learn from that in any future work that we do. Um, and we've just started with the co-design work with our four co-design pilot sites, and we're actively recruiting 60 more practices to start this quality improvement project that will really begin between January and June of 2022. So we have a little bit of time, but we want to get people on board now so we can get everything set up. And then that project work will really go for 12 months. So once we start implementing the work in the practice, that will go for 12 months. And then um, after that, we'll just see how we did. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. I think that's going to be very helpful for folks who, who are thinking about participating. So Dr. Wexler, I'm going to turn uh, a few questions over to you as the site lead on this project at Ohio State University. What are some early learnings you've had from your involvement with this? Yeah, it's it's always interesting to, to follow process and how people do things differently. And like a lot of things in healthcare, if you've seen one, you've seen one. And so there's a variety of structural staffing patient needs that, that create gaps for reasons that uh, people may not be att paying attention to, that something like this will allow us to design interventions to, to improve them. So, you know, how is the room physically set up? You know, the old way is the, the blood pressure cuff is, is, is attached to the wall, you can't move it around. And so then the patient has to climb up on the exam table and have their blood pressure taken. So we're not even able to use proper blood pressure technique because the physical structure of the room just doesn't even allow us to do it. Uh, when it comes to rooming, the other thing is you bring the patient back and what's the first thing that happens? They have their blood pressure taken. And so that's because of the process of rooming and a lot of what primary care does, but taking the blood pressure, as soon as you walk somebody down the hallway, especially if they're running late or if the provider's running late, it's not going to give you a terribly accurate blood pressure and it is likely to increase the possibility that that blood pressure is going to be elevated because the very first thing that gets done is the blood pressure gets taken as opposed to the being able to wait for five minutes. And so it, it's really a lot of those types of things that we can see how might we impact them. You know, is it better to take the blood pressure at the end, but then you have to have a talk with the nurses and the medical assistants who are used to having a conversation with the patient while they're rooming them. We'd really rather not have a conversation because we want the patient to be more relaxed. And then of course, when it comes to providers and you're doing any type of intervention, whether it's therapeutic lifestyle change or medication, when you see the patient back, some people see them back in two weeks, some are four weeks, some are six weeks, some make it a nurse visit, some make it a provider visit, some do a phone call. And so there's pluses and minuses to all of these things. But, but the important thing is to be able to look at all these processes and see what we can do to improve them. Uh, we understand in the reality of primary care to implement all the aspects of good blood pressure monitoring are going to be difficult but we can certainly do things and make changes that, that certainly help improve how we do it. Right. Yeah, and that's a great point that, that we will want to set up these protocols for practices so we are consistent, but we want to be flexible to the practice to see how they can use their staff and resources to set um, up you know, protocols that are tailored to their practice. So this isn't a specific mandate that we're coming into the practice right but allowing flexibility on the part of the practice to make it work for them. And I think that's a really important point. Yeah. So what are some benefits to patients and practice teams for engaging with the quality improvement project that, that you would recognize? Well, we do a poor job of controlling blood pressure in the United States, and it's, it's a problem worldwide, but in particular in the United States as well. But we have to remember that blood pressure is the antecedent to most cases of heart failure. It's the antecedent to a lot of strokes and heart attacks. And so the ability to control blood pressure really is important to be able to significantly reduce um, some of the leading causes of death in the United States. 
uh, with especially focused on cardiovascular health. And I think what's also really important to understand is just lowering blood pressure by three or four uh, millimeters of mercury has a very significant positive impact on reduction in heart attacks and reduction in strokes. So you don't need to get a lot to get a really large benefit. And so from the patient perspective, it's really good um, quality cardiovascular outcomes. From the provider standpoint, anybody who's involved in any type of value-based contract, blood pressure is always a metric. And blood pressure is a metric because it drives so many of those other things we just mentioned. And I haven't even mentioned diabetes yet, which is also an, uh, an important uh, comorbidity. So it's really a benefit for everybody. The patient benefits because they have better cardiovascular outcomes. From the provider standpoint, it allows you to do better with regards to your quality metrics. Great. Yeah, those are important points, especially as we all have so many different uh, value-based programs, but uh, recognizing that we're really doing this for our patients that we see every day to prevent them from having uh, poor outcomes. So. Exactly. Yeah. Who, um, so who can participate in this project and how can interested practices get more information? So those who are interested may have seen some of the scroll there with the email that you can contact Kathy Sullivan and that can be very, very helpful. What we're looking for is practices who are able to evaluate um, what their current status is. So blood pressures uh, of less than 140 over 90, but have less than 70% control of their general population. Obviously, if we have an office that's already got 85% of blood pressure patients that are at a controlled level, then th the ability to impact that is significantly less than say somebody who's at 50%. So we really want somebody less than 70%. We also are looking for practices where the smoking rate is greater than 10%. Uh, because as you mentioned, this is not just about blood pressure control, it's also about cholesterol, it's also about smoking cessation. So those are really the things that we're really looking at with respect to practices that would be really good for this particular type of project. It's important for practices to know as well, you can be rural, urban, academic, general internal medicine, family medicine, it doesn't matter. We're looking for all types of practices across all of Ohio in various practice settings to be able to do this because that'll give us a much better uh, picture as to what's going on in Ohio, but also to positively impact that. Yeah, that's great. And we've had some practices that have asked us, well, if their blood pressure is controlled, but they have a very high rate of smoking, uh, can they participate? And in general, we have been allowing one or the other. So, um, so that if, in case anybody has a question about that, um, that that's, uh, that's true as well. And then the other thing that to participate just to um, what are some expectations and I'll, I'll just iterate this, but this is to be willing to join a project kickoff um, and we will work on the timing and make that um, more, you know, as convenient as possible. Um, we'll work, you have to be willing to work with a quality improvement coach at least once a month and that can be by phone. Um, it should be no more than an hour. So somewhere between 30 minutes to an hour once a month with that quality improvement coach, because that has worked to really help practices put these um, protocols in place. And then willingness to join a one hour quarterly webinar uh, during that one year implementation. Um, and we usually do those over a noon time frame, um, since that tends to work for practices better, um, but we will it will depend on which practices are involved and what they want to do. Um, and that that that's really the commitment to um, that we require as part of this. Um, and we will be having, um, as seen on the on the scroll down here, um, we'll be share, having a share electronic health record data every month um, on key process and outcome measures related to those, uh, the blood pressure, cholesterol, and smoking so that we can work with you to improve those outcomes. So it's really just a quality improvement piece. And, and we'll work with you on that no matter what system you're using in terms of your EHR. That sounds and, great. So great. No, that's perfect. I was just about to say anything you would add to that. Um, and um, I think the only other thing we should mention is that we will be offering uh, both CME as well as maintenance of certification. Um, and so uh, the Ohio Academy of Family Physicians will be help helping us with the performance improvement practice credit um, and Metro Health will be offering the continuing medical education. So all of those are um, just something that can be helpful to practices as well. Um, 
So I think those are our main, uh, the other thing that, that we're mentioning here on the scroll is up to $4,000 payment for participation. Most of this um, will depend on uh, the, the data reporting needs. So often we'll pay a, a little bit of, of dollars around the IT piece to help participate. Um, and we can, we can talk with any practice that's interested more about, about that as well. Great, thank you, that's very helpful. So um, I think that's it, Dr. Wexler. Anything more you would add to, to this at this point? No, I think just to reiterate that this is really open for anybody in primary care that hits the particular enrollment criteria we're looking at, but, but also to remember improvement in cardiovascular health is really dependent on blood pressure control. And this is really one of the best ways for us to improve the outcome uh, for our patients. Great. Well, thanks so much for joining with me today as we did this uh, video for everyone. And thanks again to the Ohio Academy of Family Physicians for helping us uh, record this and reach out to practices across the state. We'd love to have you come and join with us in this collaborative effort. Thank you.